We don't want any bola bola affecting us in any way. And that, um, of course, welcome back to TV3 New Day. Now, according to the UNDP, water scarcity affects more than 40% of people around the world. Now, the SDGs that were introduced about three years ago um, has number six indicating that they want to provide clean water and sanitation to people by 2030. And that is on course. But three years into the implementation of these SDGs, it looks like Ghana's national policy on water and environmental sanitation uh, yet to align with these SDG goals and of course when it comes to water problems in our country we do understand that you know around the world about 40 percent of our waterways are choked with plastics and so we've been having this conversation for the past two or three weeks now asking if there should be a ban on single-use plastics or ban on plastics in general and we've had very diverse conversations on it today we'll be speaking to Mr. Yao Atta Ahin and he's the WASH technical coordinator with World Vision Ghana and wash of course is water uh, sanitation and hygiene as well so it's all about the Molid conference convener that is happening very soon and even before we go into the conference I'd like us to touch on the possible ban of plastics in the country welcome to th TV3 New Day so just about last week the president uh, launched an initiative to handle the plastic situation in the country and is a Ghana national plastic action partnership and so clearly we understand that there's not going to be a direct ban on plastics in the country however they are trying to find ways by which we reduce the menace to its barest minimum if this conference is talking about providing water sustainable water safe water uh, to people across the country first of all let me ask you of course you know that plastics um, are one of our biggest problems in in the country by choking our waterways causing flooding and all of that do you think that we should ban plastics well thank you um first of all let's establish that mm -hmm. We have a challenge as a country. Yeah. In fact, in Ghana, we generate close to 5 million tons mm -hmm. of waste, solid yeah. waste, a year. Out of which we have 1 million, that is plastics, yeah. plastic, I mean waste. And only 2% is recycled. Mm -hmm. So obviously there's a challenge. Yeah. Our position is that we cannot have an outright ban. We think that let's take some measures first. Okay. Let's redouble efforts at recycling okay and then if we are not able to succeed then we can begin to think about this come to think of it in 2010 government of ghana through an act of parliament passed a bill yeah a law yeah which um mandated plastic waste um in, or plastic importers mm -hmm. to commit some resources exactly. into a fund mm -hmm. which is called the plastic Ex waste recycling fund okay our estimation is that it has accrued in excess of 900 million Ghana cities. Mm -hmm. And yet we have not disbursed this fund for people to be able to go into recycling. Mm. Let's start that first. And then okay. if we are not able to succeed, then we can think about a ban. But does it not sound like you're trying to experiment with the problem? Because if you are saying, let's start this first, and then if that doesn't work, we move on we, to the next we, one. There we, really we is think, no time. Yes, we think it will work. Okay. But we have estimated that, you know, a larger percentage of our waste is recyclable. And therefore, if we begin to take steps at recycling, then we'll be able to get rid of a lot of the waste, the plastic waste that we find mm. on our streets and our gutters. Okay. That will address, I mean, the problem. Okay. We are saying that if we are not able to succeed, then we can begin to think about this. But if we haven't taken any steps towards recycling you can't mm -hmm. begin to think about banning well we're trying to manage it in in a way and that's why the president um you know i don't think we have policy. managed it effectively as at a all. country at all we okay. have not done well at that? all not if you have only two percent of your plastic waste Being one recycled. million tons only two percent recycled it's a problem mm. i mean if we are able to support private sector you know that zoom lion for example has some plants they plants. are doing some recycling yeah. they why can't we support many of the other sector mm. players to mm. go into it mm. we'll be better off but back in 2015 i believe that there was also a law that was um you know set up to make sure that all plastics below 20 uh, microns or so Good. would be banned so you have to produce beyond that yes and even that has not been implemented at least that was a step i mean you see there are challenges uh -huh. you just don't go into a ban there are so many factors that come into play. Okay. And even the commitment to do this mm -hmm. may not be there. Okay. I think that as a country, we need to be able to implement the policies and strategies that we have developed. They are fine policies and yeah. strategies. 
even the one the president just launched. Mm -hmm. Very fantastic. But ask yourself, how well are we going to implement it? Mm -hmm. We okay. had the environmental sanitation policy, for example. Yeah. We have estimated that not even up to 10% was implemented, and yet it has expired. Hmm. It's due for review. Hmm. And so these are the things we don't do well. Implementation has been our being. Okay. And still talking about recycling, I remember I asked, um, you know, the person who represented the Ghana manufacturing uh, companies uh, that manufacture plastics, you know, and I asked him that, why are we waiting for government to be the one to pass this, um, you know, law that says that we have to recycle? Well, I mean, as individual companies, yes. can't we take up that, um, you know, responsibility and say that I'm going to invest this amount of we money can, into can recycling? Take, you know, recycling is also capital intensive. Mm -hmm. And many of our private sector players may not have the world without to be able to go into it. Are they not making And that is why life? that fund was established. Okay. So that if a private sector operator wants to go into plastic recycling, they can access this fund and go into it. Okay. Why the fund has not been disbursed from 2010 to now, almost mm. 10 years, is You still don't bugging. understand. And we are calling on parliament to look at it. Okay. But they passed it. Mm. Let's go back now to attitude now change because that's also another major factor major, in major, this major, problem. Major, major challenge. I mean, recycling alone is not going to tackle the issue. Right. If we right. don't change our attitude, that means that we're still going to choke our gutters and our waterways with right. plastics. How do we go about First of all, you know, well? apart from attitude now change, which is critical, mm -hmm. we need to have a certain discipline in, mm -hmm. our, in our lives. Apart from attitude now change, we need to do law enforcement. Okay. Because if you can't enforce the laws, people will get away with any offense. They will continue to do it. How do you intend we enforce the law? No, we have all the laws. Mm -hmm. All the district assemblies have bylaws, fantastic yeah. bylaws they have developed. Mm. But they are unable to implement. So in your I mean, opinion, how do you think we should go we about it? We need the it? political will. I mean, let the, whip, let the, the law bite. Okay. And we have developed the laws for ourselves. If we can't implement them, what is the sense in developing I them? I mean, in, in the, the past, if you drop something, there's going to be a whip. Correct. Um, even you, know, before. you think they should bring that back? I mean, I think it's coming back. Mm. The ministry, I know, has taken some steps towards that. Yeah. Just that there are also challenges of with course. it. But they have taken some steps and it will work. And then you increase financing. Apart from financing, you need to develop the infrastructure. All this will go into a comprehensive. Mm. Um, waste management, including plastic waste. If we don't do that, we cannot tackle it with only one. What about solutions. waste separation? Because if we're talking recycling again, yes. then it will be easier if people learn <laughs> to separate their waste. If I we agree. have not educated people on how to separate waste, how are you going to recycle? Are we, are we not educated people? Well, I, I think that education enough. hasn't been enough. Maybe not enough, but I think that there's been a lot of education on this. Mm. People just don't have the will to implement it. That is the problem, you know, and that is why it's important you raise attitudinal change. Yeah. I think we should continue to emphasize on that. And once people begin to accept it, then they will begin to do the right things. Okay. Otherwise, we will continue to be where All we right. are. I believe that this conversation is going to be um, included in the Moli Conference convener that's happening. Tell me about it, though. Uh, the Moli Conference the third? is 30 years 30, old. Okay. And it's the largest running um, civil society led conference in Africa mm. and one of the longest in the world. Mm -hmm. It's a very important conference for us as a country. Um, it brings together civil society players, it brings together government players, private sector, development partners, the mm -hmm. media, everybody who has a stake in our wash services delivery. Okay. And it has shaped a lot of policies in this country. So let me tell you, for example, that the establishment of the Community Water and Sanitation Agency, for example, mm -hmm. was as a result of the Mole Conference. Okay. One of the community points was that let's establish the Community Water and Sanitation Agency oh, because great. previously everything was under one I mean, umbrella, mm -hmm. water services delivery. But we thought that we needed a creation for small towns and rural water supply, and it has worked perfectly. Oh, lovely. Apart from that, you know, previously, communities were required to pay 5% capital upfront contribution before they could assess any water facility. Mm. In 2011, we had to advocate, and it was taken off. Okay. And so it is one of the conferences that shape uh, sector policies and strategies. Okay. And this year, what is different? What would be your key objectives? This year, we are looking at 30 years of multi-stakeholder dialogue okay. in the water and sanitation sector. We are looking at the reflections and prospects. And we are taking four key points. Water and IWRM, Integrated Water Resource Management, mm. Sanitation, 
and hygiene. Mm -hmm. Then we are looking at um, institutional development, and we are also looking at private sector participation. Okay. And this is organized by the coalition of NGOs in water and sanitation, mm. of which I'm the vice vice chairman. Nice. And it is a conference that this year we believe we should be able to make it a game changer mm -hmm. because there are so many things that are not working right in the sector okay. and we need to begin to take the right steps right, right from here so give me more information about it uh where is it happening open to people yes yeah, so all of the that the conference is taking place in the Ho, okay at the volta serene hotel from the 4th to the 8th of november all this right. uh, next month okay and it's a conference that is open to sector players and the public Mm. And so academic and research institutions, civil society organizations, private sector, everybody can participate. All right. You can only go online. You go to the Coniwas website, you can register. All right. You can also contact the Coniwas Secretariat and register. It mm. is a very, very important conference that it is. we are expecting high profile people to also participate. Okay. And most importantly, it's all about providing safe and sustainable water and sanitation, uh, to, and sanitation to people across the country. Yes. And we hope that by 2025, we're going to achieve that. Oh, yes. I mean, if, we take, even, the too far? if we take the right steps, we should be able to achieve this so all that right. everybody everywhere can have access to sustainable water and sanitation services. One advice to viewers who are watching, we're, we're fond of wasting water a lot. And oh, yes. now for some people, your taps don't flow anymore, so you won't leave it running <laughs> for that long. But there are other ways by which people waste water. What yes. are you going to say to them before we wrap up on this? Yes, I mean, water is a very important resource and we cannot afford to waste it. Many people elsewhere do not have access to it. And so let's preserve the water that we have for even sanitation. It is a it waste is. to waste waste. Exactly. So let's waste to put waste the waste. waste into proper use yes so that it can be productive for all of us thank you so much for joining me mr Welcome. yao ata ahin uh wash technical coordinator world vision ghana and wash is vice chairman pardon me um for what Coalition of NGOs okay and water and okay all right and it's all about the molly conference convener and so i hope that you'll be part of this conversation as we intend to provide sustainable safe uh water and sanitation to people across the country thank you so much for joining me thank 